<laughs> what was the longest boyfriend you've had? Um, probably like two weeks. Serious? <laughs> yeah, serious. <laughs> <laughs> what happened with him? <laughs> I broke his heart. <laughs> I think you'd be a bit of a heartbreaker. Oh. Um, I just did a little warm up and I asked you your surname, but can you pronounce it for me again? Retschlag. Retschlag. And, and where does Retschlag originate from? It's very German. Um, yeah, that's really all I know. <laughs> okay. Um, your parents' background, are they always from Australia? Um, they're locals. They were born and raised in Nanango. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you were born and raised. Yeah, I'm you, a local girl. Nice. And uh, you're in Wondai now. You've always been in Wondai? Um, my parents used to own Tingura Feedlot, um, located in Rural in there. So I was raised there for 15 years of my life and okay. then we moved over to Wondai about seven years ago. Got it. Always been in Wondai. So you finished school and uh, what was school like for you? Um, enjoy school? I loved primary school. Yeah. Um, I went to Rurulan, um State School yeah. so there was only about 50 kids there. So very, very small school and then I moved to Kingaroy High School um, that was a little bit challenging going from such a small school to, to a bigger, then school, a bigger yeah. school, yep. And then from there I went to uni. Uh-huh. So uh, good marks at school then? Uh, probably not the best, but yeah, uni was definitely more my forte than school. I found yeah. school too structured. Got it. But tell us about your degree, what you got into. Um, so I did my Bachelor of General Science up at James Cook University. Um, I really couldn't pick a major because I didn't know what I wanted to specialise in. So yeah, I just did my general science. I did a range of subjects from hydrology, geology, through to animal behaviour and yeah, pretty much you name it, I did it. <laughs> wow. Was there anything at school that you sort of said, yeah, this is the road I want to go down? Or when did you first say, this is, this is what I want to do? Um, I suppose I always had an interest in science. Um, yeah, right through school. And I just liked, um, I suppose, the difference that came out of it. Like it had almost a set answer, but at the same time, it mm. was very different from everything else. I'm definitely no good at English. So I knew that that was definitely <laughs> out. <laughs> um, maths was okay. And yeah, I suppose science was it. I yeah. liked, yeah, just the difference that it gave. Okay. Um, you went to JCU? That's correct. Whereabouts is that for some of our listeners? Um, up in Townsville. Uh huh. So, a bit of a change from Little Wondai? Um, definitely. A lot warmer. Yeah? Yeah. What, besides the weather, what were some of the other cultural changes? Um, I suppose Wondai is a very small country town. So, mm. going to, I suppose, a bigger city. So, they actually had an airport and mm, big fancy. shopping centres and stuff like that. <laughs> Probably not as big as Brisbane. Yeah. Um, I find Brisbane very hectic, mm. where Townsville's, yeah, a little bit calmer. And, yeah, I Got really it. enjoyed it up there. Okay. So, finish your degree and was it everything you thought it would be um, doing that degree? I suppose being the first one from my family to go to uni, it was very different. Like we didn't know what to expect mm. and going so far away from home was a little bit of a challenge at times. Mum definitely got lots of phone calls. Um, but yeah, I really... From you? Yeah, from me. Saying, saying what? <laughs> saying I wanted to come home. <laughs> I hate it up here. And then... I need the next, a hug. Oh, the next week I was like, nah, it's all right. Yeah. I like it Stop again. Stop ringing me, mum. God. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... Finished uni. Now, you got work back in Kingaroy? Yeah, just at Memorambi. Okay. And did that sort of happen before you graduated or did you graduate, come back home and then go, right, now what? Yeah, exactly. I graduated, came home and I was like, now what? What am I going to do mm. with my life? Okay. And what sort of ideas did you have in your head? Um, I was willing to do anything. I suppose employment at the moment is very difficult to find um so i'd been applying for jobs left right and center one was down in antarctica wow yeah what was that doing um working as a scientist down there oh you should have taken that i know but <laughs> <laughs> they never got back to me yeah okay but no um mum goes you hate the cold courtney why would you want to go to antarctica yeah. but yeah it was a job and i was willing to yeah pretty much do anything okay but but now you you did get a job that you like here yeah. locally. How did that come about? 
Um, actually, I was out at the Watermelon Festival and another girl I know, she just said, oh, did you know that Alkaloids was um, looking for stuff? And I said, no, not really. So, yeah, that's sort of how that all came about. Uh -huh. And they had a position there. Yeah. Nice. And how long have you been there now? Four months. Oh, so you're just fresh. Yeah. Oh, good. And it's uh, you're still enjoying it? Still learning lots? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. Like when I was up at uni, I told mum, I am never going to work in a lab. I absolutely hate doing like my chemistry practice in labs, yeah. but here we are. And you're doing it. Um, what does what does your work entail in the lab? Um, so I'm a laboratory analyst. So I pretty much analyze, um, we produce a pharmaceutical drug. So I pretty much analyze to make sure that it's of the highest quality mm. and that you're pretty much not going to get sick from it. Oh, got it. All right, cool. Let's turn the page then. So let's start to talk about Miss Showgirl. Yes. Which I'm really interested and excited to talk about. You're a bit of a star. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure about that. You're a bit of a star in the, uh, in the, in the show society. Um, when did you first get involved in, in the show? Um, I suppose I've been attending my local shows for... I can't even remember how long. Um, it went from there to then competing at shows. We first of all started um, leading cattle for Graham Wicks. Um, he has a limousine stud. Um, and then we went from there and my brother became very interested in horses. So naturally we got horses and yeah, um, used to help compete with those, showing them um, in leg classes and riding them. Mm. And then I suppose my commitment from there went to then assisting in shows because without your stewards and your judges, there Doesn't wouldn't be happen. a show. Yeah, well said. Tell me a little bit about Miss Showgirl. Um, so the Miss Showgirl um, competition has been running for 35 years now. I suppose it started back in 1983, which, yeah, so the first one was Esther Smith. You, say, you sound like you're going straight into um, <laughs> judging. My Am I judging? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to remember all the facts That's and figures. Right. Yeah, so for me, my Miss Showgirl interest started quite a number of years ago when my mum told me that she was Nenengo's Miss Showgirl and mm. um, many people that I know have um, entered into the contest. So it's um, a aimed at those aged 18 to 28, um, young females that um, are unmarried and haven't had a child. Haven't had kids. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, for those that have, and for the men, there's actually the rural ambassador, so they're entitled to enter into that contest. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just sort of, I was asked by um, the secretary of the King Roy Show Society if I was um, willing to enter into this year's contest, and I accepted the challenge, and oh, here we right. are. Now, I don't want to embarrass you, but um, you're an attractive young lady, but I get that it's not necessarily about how attractive you are like some other showgirl type things might be oh absolutely um that's probably the main thing that people think of when they think miss showgirl is that you've got to be attractive and you've got to be a certain body type and all mm. the rest of it that comes along with um young girls insecurities i suppose mm. um but it's definitely not that it's more based on your knowledge and your involvement in your local show society and how involved you could then become in the Queensland show movement. So you, what, what exactly at the moment is your title? So I was lucky enough to win the King Aroy Miss Showgirl title. Um, then I went on to our subchamber judging and competed against those other girls from their shows. And yeah, I was lucky enough to win South Burnett Miss Showgirl. Okay. And, and in the South Burnett, there's how many shows? So there's seven shows in the South Burnett. Not all had a Miss Showgirl. So I suppose I'm really trying to get those from the Gamery and Blackbutt area to become more involved because they haven't had a Miss Showgirl for a number of years. Okay. So it'd be great to see girls from that area yeah. um, become more involved, which would be fantastic. Maybe I should shave the legs and... Uh... <laughs> Cut off your hair or grow <laughs> long hair or something. That's right. <laughs> there's there's seven, seven shows in the subchamber being the South Burnett. Yes, that's correct. And you have won the title of South Burnett Miss Show Girl. Yes. Got it. Now, the next step is to go to the, the Brisbane Ecker. Yes. So the Queensland show... That's, yeah. Yep, that's correct. And uh, and tell me what the date of that. 
It's coming up, right? It's coming up very quickly. So pretty much a week from now, I will be down in Brisbane. Wow. Probably all getting ready to head to the Queensland Country Life. And then how many other girls will be competing at the ECA? So there'll be 11 of us down um, in Brisbane competing for the title of the Queensland Country Life Miss Showgirl. Yeah, it's going to be... 11 from all over Queensland. From all over Queensland. Do you know some of the other girls that are competing? No, which is very nerve-wracking. I know some of the other girls have sort of met each other along the way. One of the girls said that her mum actually works with one of the other Miss Show girls, so Uh they have have a link there. And but I suppose, yeah, you just take everything as it comes. Exactly. Yeah. Good. uh, Good philosophy. Is there a bit of a assessment like? What makes you a good show girl versus the other, the other girls that you would have come up against? Is there a criteria is what I'm asking? There is a, a criteria and if you need to know any information about how to become involved in your Miss Show Girl competition, definitely jump on the QCAS website. They have a lot of information of exactly what you need to do and I suppose the age limits and all the rest of it. But I suppose for myself, I have been involved in our local shows not heavily, but for quite a number of years now doing different things. So I tend to steward a lot over at the Nanango show in the horse area. What does that entail? It just entails getting those competitors ready and making the judges day as smooth as possible, um, especially because a lot of judges travel. So they want to get in, get their job done, yep. make sure that it's fair in their judging. And then they want to obviously get on the road so that they can get home. Sure. I sound like I need you in my personal life. Just <laughs> <laughs> organise that. Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's nothing about, or, or is it, uh, anything about how well you answer their questions or how well you present or... I suppose when you get down to the ECA, it's going to be hard for them to know exactly your involvement sure. in the show society because there's 128 shows in Queensland. Yeah. So they're not going to know what show you're involved in and what you've done and they're not going to know me personally. That's right. So I suppose all I can do is answer my questions to the best of my ability when I get down there yeah. and just tell them a little bit about myself. There's no point going down to ECA and being someone that you're not. And I think these judges would probably have seen it all before too, right? Oh, absolutely. They're see through it. Well, what I get about this, Courtney, is it's it's not your some of the horror stories you hear about different shows and pageants and stuff like that. It sounds very real and genuine. Oh, it's definitely not a beauty pageant. It's definitely about your knowledge and your involvement in the shows. Mm. And 128 shows in Queensland. Yeah, that fluctuates from year to year, just depending on whether um, each show can run, I suppose, especially when you go out west. They have a lot of hardship times, so where they go through drought and stuff like that and are not always able to have a show. Got it. Yeah, 128. Wow. And you were telling me earlier that if you are successful and you do win at the Queensland Country Life Miss Showgirl. Am I saying that right? Yes, that's correct. (laughs) I've been practicing all night. (laughs) Uh, If you are successful then, what are your obligations? So if you're successful down at ECA and you win the um, Queensland Country Life Miss Showgirl title, you are then... Well, you hold that title for 12 months and you're asked to just as many shows as possible and try and get um, youth involved in their local shows and, yeah, just be um, an influential role model. Got it. All right, putting you on the spot now, pretend I'm one of the judges. Yes. (laughs) This has just made me very nervous. We didn't plan this one. Um, How do you get the youth involved? And I get this isn't an easy question, right, because there's lots of other, uh, as you say, some shows don't even – um, continue every year so it is a, it is a challenge to get people involved but what with with the experience and knowledge that you have what could we be doing to get more youth involved in shows because they're the ones that are going to come through the years right and keep these things growing oh absolutely like I attended um, my local um, show meeting the other day and I just looked around the room and it's still 
those that have been involved in the show society for a number of years now still running it. Like, Which is awesome, right? Which is awesome because they do a fantastic job. Mm. But we've got to look that one day they're not going to be there and exactly. we do need someone to step into those shoes and take on that responsibility. There's some great competitions that a lot don't know about. So you can enter Lego into wow. the shows. There's a Lego competition at the show. There's a Lego competition at the shows. Well, I have to tell my kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, I suppose the schools are doing a really great job of this, um, getting the kids involved in leading cattle. Mm. Um, and then they take um, the cattle to the shows and get the kids to obviously prepare them mm. and present them. And that's a great way to get youth involved in the shows. There's a lot of great things out there, but a lot of people don't know about it. Mm. Is that a fair statement, Courtney, do you think? Like, is there not enough stuff for the kids? Because it seems to be a common thing, and I grew up on the Sunshine Coast, and it's definitely an issue there, is you've got stuff for the grown-ups, let's say. Yes. Um, you know, your, your, your husband and wife, and, and, and you've got stuff for the little kids a lot of the time. Um, but there's not something necessarily for that teenage, early teenage age group, I suppose, uh, unless they've got money to go to the movies or do this or that. Yeah. So they're kind of left not doing too much. So when there's a, a thing like this show, which is a pretty big event, do they kind of get a little bit left out? I think they do get a little bit left out um, in that, yeah, they don't attend their local show because this sounds horrible, but... The local shows are becoming quite expensive. Mm. So personally, I feel as though the prices should be a more reasonable price so that more can come through the gate and enjoy the show. This is probably not going to be taken very well, my suggestion, but... We can edit it out. We can edit it out, definitely. (laughs) Um, But I suppose a big draw card at a lot of shows is the local rodeo. Mm. So that's a big draw card for the youth, but that's only drawing them in of a night time. You want them to attend their show for All the day, day, enjoy the day, because yeah. we only have seven in the South Burnett. Yeah. So you want them to attend, hopefully, all seven um, within the South Burnett, but you do you want them to be there all day, mm. if yeah. possible. And then all night, right? And then all night, exactly. Exactly, and... and, and Make the most of the weekend. Exactly. Uh, come along, and, and not just because your mum and dad are going, but because you really, really... You want to go wanna for be yourself. There with you, your mates and... Yeah, uh, in, enjoy the day. A show is going to be around in another fifty years. Um, I definitely hope so. Um, there is a thing called the Next Generation, which is, um, I suppose, a sub committee that's organised by QCAS that's getting youth involved and letting them have their say in what they think needs to happen for yeah. shows to continue in the future. Okay. Um, what sort of ideas are they coming up with? Um, that I couldn't really tell you because I've only just really heard about the concept mm. and getting um, my mind around it. It's a great idea, by the way. Oh, yeah. definitely. Um, so, yeah, I do hope to become more involved in that because, mm. um, yeah, I do think that there's a lot of ideas floating around there, but they're just not being heard. Got it. And in that Next Generation Committee, what's that made up of? Who, who is that made up of? What sort of people? Um, I suppose the younger generation, as it mm. says. Um, so it's it's those um, from around Queensland. They come together and they have formed the next generation. It is pretty a secluded um, committee. Mm. Um, but, yeah, they are coming up with a lot of fantastic ideas. Because what, what happens if a show, and I'm just throwing ideas out there right so so what happens if a show leaves the town if you if it's just not sustainable anymore um i suppose it's like most things once something's left it's extremely hard to re-establish to get it going again yeah right and a lot of shows in our area have been going for quite a number of years now we are celebrating the 100th show for one day how awesome is that yeah it's fantastic wow. um has one day ever missed a year definitely yes. they have missed years yes they have missed years um so this is the 100th show or the 100th year since it started? 100th show. Wow. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the times when shows were missed were back um, back during the war when um, cool. there wasn't people around because they were off, obviously, at the war, yeah, right. um, defending our country yeah. and all the rest of it. So um, we could have more shows. Yeah, so that we can, <laughs> so that we can survive. That's fantastic. 
Um, so yeah, there has been a number of shows that have been missed over the years. Um, but yeah, they're celebrating their hundredth show. That's that's great for such a small little town. Um, so you'll definitely be at that one, I'm assuming. Definitely. Yeah. So great. yeah, it's in September, first and second of September. What is going to happen? I'm not saying if, but when you win this uh, Queensland Country Life Miss Showgirl this year, next week. Um, <laughs> Have you got your acceptance speech organised? I haven't got an acceptance speech organised, but it will be a huge honour considering out of the 35 years, the South Bennett has never won oh, the wow. title of the Miss Showgirl. No one from this area? No one from the South Bennett. Yeah. We generally do quite well in um, the Rural Ambassador. Yeah. But, yeah, we struggle a little bit in the Miss Showgirl. So, hopefully, I do okay. Mm. And, yeah, put, I suppose, South Bend on uh, South Burnett on the on map. On the map, 100%. That's great. And what then happens from there? Like, if you, if you, if you are successful, are you allowed to then con- go again next year and do no, the process so again? No, so once you're in a position, um, you're unable to rerun the next year. This is once you've gone down to ECA. Mm. Um, but those that are um, rerunning for their local area are definitely able to rerun if they've okay. won that title. Got it. So, so let's say if you just won the Wandai show and weren't successful at South Burnett, you can go ahead. You can rerun, definitely. And if I'm not successful down at Ecker, there's definitely a chance that I will rerun again next year. Uh Aha, for King Arroy again. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Um, What is the... You're telling me yesterday about the girl who won last year and and she's entitled to go to all 120-something shows. 128 shows. And how many shows did she actually go to? She did a phenomenal effort and attended more than 40 shows, which is huge considering when you consider we only have 52 weeks in a year. Exactly. That's nearly a show a week, right? And, um, you know, like someone like yourself, uh, sure, you're young and, and, you know, all of that, but you still work full time. And how are you going to fit in <laughs> that sort of amount of extra uh, time in your week? Yeah, I don't know. Kate did an amazing job. Um, Where was she based? Um, she's down at South East Queensland. Oh, you said, yeah. Yeah, so she managed to fit in work, uni and shows. Wow. So I don't know how she did it. Definitely need to take a page out of her book. <laughs> um, I think she's going to be very sleep deprived by yeah. the end of Eka, but... I think she's really enjoyed her experience. I bet. And what, when, once again, when you are successful, um, I'm building you up so much. I know. <laughs> it's making me so nervous. I've already got like swollen glands ready for <laughs> Ecker and everything. Um, what What is one or two of the biggest things that you would like to, it kind of almost feels like a, a, a presidential thing, you know, once I'm in, I will do this, this and this. Do you have a couple of things in your, in, 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 in the pipeline that um, you'd like to achieve? I suppose for myself, I really want to push how beneficial the Miss Showgirl competition mm. is because it is slowly dying. We're finding that we're getting less and less entrance each year. Mm. And I suppose it's something that I don't want to see go because it's been around for so long now. And your mum was in my mum was in and... Miss Showgirl mm. and my godmother and wow. so many other influential Maybe your people. Your daughter will. Yeah, so many other influential people in my life have um, entered into the contest, and the benefits that it has is outstanding. Like I didn't realize; I thought it was just a contest. You go in, you look good. You answer a couple of questions and that's it. But it's not... Peace on earth and saving <laughs> saving the world and all those yeah. sort of cliched questions. But it's not. It really opens a gateway to something bigger. Yeah. So for myself, I didn't realise how much work went into our local shows. Mm. And if I could take on one thing, help them in one way, improve our local shows or make their job lighter, mm. I think that that's something that I would thoroughly enjoy doing and I really want to push the Miss Showgirl um, competition in that it isn't a beauty pageant it isn't about how smart you are it's about your involvement yes there is knowledge questions in there but we don't know a lot about life and those questions that you don't know you've just got to be willing to learn those sort of things and stuff like that so 
yeah, I really hope if I am successful in it that I can, yeah, endorse more girls to become involved in it. Did you practice that response? Because it sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's sometimes I'm like thinking things through my head and yeah. words come out quicker than what my thoughts are actually happening. <laughs> no, that was uh, very impressive. You've got my vote, that's for sure. Oh, good. <laughs> Courtney, young girls and and boys for that matter that want to get involved in the other side of the showgirl, which is the ambassador. Rural ambassador, yes. Um for some of the young people that might be interested in getting involved in in the showgirl uh, journey that you that you are successfully going on at the moment, what would be the first couple of steps, and what would be your advice to them? Um, so my advice is be yourself. There's no point being someone that you're not, or trying to be someone that you're not, because you are perfect as who you are. Mm. Um, my second advice would be to jump onto the QCAS web website so um or the queensland show website they have a lot of great information about um exactly what is in t- um, entailed in this um journey and then thirdly um contact your local show society so if you call your, your local secretary um they would definitely be able to put you on the right path to then yeah enter this journey too and away you go yep have you got a dress picked out is it a dress type of thing or is it um jeans and a shirt or i wish it was jeans and a shirt <laughs> <laughs> no so it is a little bit more formal once you get down to Eka. Yep. um so i have a number of outfits ready for Eka. um i'm wearing a lot of little business suits i suppose you uh-huh. could say so um a lot of girls don't realize but stockings are a must for miss showgirl it's something that has yeah been passed down mm. so they is do, that just part of the co- dress code or the weather um, or i suppose it's an unspoken rule mm. so it's not something that's formally written but it's an uh-huh. unspoken rule like um the closed toe shoes it's an unspoken rule but the Got ladies it. definitely approve and um like that you wear close toe shoes see. so there's a lot of uh history and tradition in this isn't oh, there? absolutely and i think that's why i like the contest so much in that It does have a lot of history about Mm. it and yeah. That's great. Courtney, thanks for hanging out with me. That's okay. It's been great to chat. (laughs) I should get ready for work now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How do you feel? Feel all right? Um, Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I forgot to press record, so I'll have to do this whole thing again. (laughs) I think I would cry. (laughs) Thanks for hanging out, Courtney. It's been great. Thank you so much, Matt. No worries.